The walk across the edge of Nethermore is exactly the kind of painstaking, foot aching, and daylight draining exercise as could be expected. The Arkenspire grows significantly on the horizon, showing a good amount of progress toward the ruined tower, but your shadows are long and the sun is already low. You are not going to make it to the inn like Hugh had promised, not before nightfall anyway. I could have sworn on Rune's old sack that there was a bury old house on the road up this way. Hugh sighs, shaking his head and covering his eyes to the look of the reddening sunset. I feel absolutely terrible that it seems I've led you astray. He turns and scans the edge of his vision, which is remarkable for an old man, it seems. He points into the sunset. Ah, civilization. There's a fence, like an old estate road just up ahead. If we step up the pace, I bet we can get to it, hop over, and get some cover from the night's demons, eh? How's that sound to you? A blood-curdling, inhuman howl rips across the moors from the darkening dusk, answering his question before any of you can and quickening your pace. But will it be enough? We now each have to do a resistance of three tests. Uh, I'll be rolling two dice. Barrett will be rolling three. I'll do mine first. I'll give him a roll. Oh, I've got a burst. That's two successes. And there's a third. So I'm good. And then Barrett will roll all three of these. And he gets a burst with two focus. Uh, another burst. Oh, my goodness. And three. So three successes. He'll start the game with two focus. You reach the old wrought iron fence work and realize that it isn't the boundary to any old estate or mansion, it is a sturdy barrier for a dilapidated local cemetery yard. Great. All right, all right, Hugh laughs nervously. So it isn't four walls and a barring door, but it is strong cold iron bars, a working gate, and more than a few backstop corners that make for a defensible campsite. It's not ideal, Hugh shrugs, and another bestial moan follows you from off the moors sends shivers down your spine. But anything is better than being out in the open. What do you say? Should we hop the fence and find a good place to make camp inside the cemetery or try and go around and put the graveyard between you and whatever's chasing you? Uh, let's go ahead and hop the fence. Finding a foothold in the creaking fence, you follow Hugh over the top, careful not to gash yourselves on the sparkly tops of the posts. You move quickly into the graveyard, making the most out of the failing daylight. The headstones and mausoleums bear ancient names, some of which you recognize from the text and folk stories, but their age and importance is overshadowed easily by the fact that many of the graves themselves lie recently open and empty of their former inhabitants, a chilling sight when accompanied by the emergency uh, or the emergence of a thick evening fog. Oh dear, Hugh gasped, I think I've misjudged just how powerful the awakening altars have become. A wicked shrill laugh and a chorus of moans echo through the thickening night. We need to hide! Suddenly he breaks away from you, leaping spryly over a half-toppled headstone and into the mist, the gray clouds swallowing him up to be replaced by the swaying yellow eyes of the horrors that haunt you. Go to 004. Following Hugh into the gloom is like chasing a moonbeam. For an old man, he moves like the wind and makes almost no sound as he does so. Sure that he has lost you in the twists and the turns of the grave rows, you instead look to find some place you can defend against the monsters that you can hear shambling in the dark and their crackling mistress. Knocking over a large, half-broken slab monument to block one path, you back yourself into a tightly packed series of graves and intermittent structures. Go to 025. You make it to what you think is a defensible point inside the sprawl of the old graveyard. It is surely imperfect and you cannot guarantee where the enemies will come from or even exactly what sort of horrors they might be. It might not be the old bury house Hugh had promised you earlier today, nowhere near it, but it'll have to do. The glowing eyes of the undead peer out of the otherworldly fog that has rolled in. Like a vaporous escort to the monsters that have followed you into the graveyard, it swirls and surrounds everything around you. Yes, it of you. you. The ghostly woman cackles again. Or at or least, least your meat you and your bones. You grip your weapons tighter, knowing that you will need them soon enough. So it looks like we're going to be doing an encounter this time. The encounter deck we're going to use is Grave Circumstances, the threat deck is the Profaned, and the villain deck is the Wynora Morn. So we have here, search the encounter deck for the undead graves and Aluna cards and put them into the encounter play area. Each hero places one quest token in the grave space farthest from them and then draws one threat. Now, I haven't played an encounter yet. This is going to be the first encounter that we're doing. So I'm not going to adjust any of the rules. We're just going to draw one threat per player each turn like you normally do. Uh, and then we'll see if it's too easy and maybe make a recommendation at the end. But that's what we're going to try with the encounters. Because I know the encounters are a little bit different than the dungeon. Here are the three cards that are out in the encounter area. Remember, there's no quest. There's no altar here because it's an encounter. Instead, we have our encounter area. And then we have our villain area as normal. 
So we have Graves. We can do an interact here and move a search token from your space to this card. You can activate this. When it activates, uh, each hero must either discard one search token from this card or place a search token in the grave space nearest them that does not have one. We have the undead. This is one of the ways that we can lose. Uh, it says quest tokens represent the undead. Undead are figures that cannot be attacked or affected by non-encounter card effects. And we have an activate here. Each undead moves two spaces towards the gate space nearest it. Then move each undead on a space uh, a gate space to this card. Each undead still on the board deals a hero adjacent to it three damage. So they're going to try and attack us. The only way that we're going to be able to get rid of them is through um, another interact. We have a Luna here. Each time a hero gains a focus, they can actually place focus on this card. And you can, within a range three, roll one, uh, one blue die uh, for each focus that's on this card. And then for each burst roll, discard one focus from this card and discard one undead from the board. Then if no undead remain on the board, discard the top card of the villain deck. So whenever you do an encounter, the, your goal is always to defeat the villain. So we have to last long enough to get Winora out on the board and take her out. I also want to mention that the graves are considered features. So you can see when you're doing a search and you have to be adjacent to a feature, you just have to be adjacent to a grave. Uh, and then you'll put your search tokens on this as well for that. If there's ever five quest tokens on the undead card, the profane have gained enough legions for their nefarious purpose and we lose the game. Heroes cannot move into gate spaces. Where there is a search token on the board, the Aluna card is treated as if it were blank. So we can't get have those search tokens on the board because then we can't use Aluna to actually get rid of the undead. During their turn, a hero may discard one card from their hand to discard an undead adjacent to them. So we can get rid of them in two ways. One is using a Luna, and the other one is just discarding a card from her hand when we're adjacent to them. This will also activate during the encounter phase. Each hero must place one quest token on the empty space, uh, empty grave space furthest from them. Winora here will have an activate effect on this side. Each minion heals one damage. If there's no minion in play, each, uh, each character has to do a charm resist of three. And then she's looking for the knight. Each hero must either discard one focus or suffer one damage. We also have a new hero and threat uh, uh, activation card. You'll be doing a threat turn, a villain turn, and an encounter turn. Uh, so it's a little different than the uh, quest phase because there's no questing uh, in an encounter. Here we have our threat deck, the Profaned. Now, this needs a little bit of an FAQ, uh, so it's a little confusing. Once during their turn, a hero may test their willpower equal to the uh, X, uh, where X is the amount of enemies that are in the, their room, or for us, since the encounter is one room, it's on the encounter board. And what you're going to do is you're going to uh, reduce the amount of successes you get by the amount of enemies that are out there. And then for every one that you get above that, you can discard one threat token from a character. So we're going to get threat tokens on, our, on uh, us, uh, and it's essentially going to be fear. We're going to be scared of these guys. <laughs> and so that the threat that's on us will actually make it more their attacks more powerful. So we're each going to draw one threat. This one's going to be mine. I will have the wretch. And remember, he's going to have seven health because we're playing with that. One of those is the enemy upgrades. And the other one is he's going to come with one armor token. So that one's mine. And Berndt will have the profaned shambler. And he also will have one armor and he has five health instead of uh, four. We each have drawn our four cards. I don't think either of us are mulliganing. So we're going to take him. Let's start the game. So here we have our two undead. They are placed in grave graveyard spaces uh, as far away as possible from us. We're over here. We're starting in these starting spaces. We believe Hugh is with us. I'm going to control Hugh. And we have our two enemies, the wretch over here and the skeleton over here. After a lengthy discussion of about 30 seconds, I have decided to go ahead and go first. Van Geyser is going to take his first action. He's going to use Persistent Tracker. Now, this is an action and a bounty. So I'm going to go ahead and search the grave that's actually right in front of me using my Fortitude, which is fantastic because I love Fortitude, as you can tell by the intro. Then you may reveal the top card of the threat deck and return it to either the top or bottom of the other deck. And I've actually got my die here because I'm going to plan to do this too. I'm going to be able to attach this card to an enemy in your room. After the attached enemy is defeated, you get an additional supply. That's called bonus. That's like a bonus right there. It's like a Christmas bonus. The card on the top is Growing Dread. And from the reaching out of evil hands, I don't want it anywhere near me. So we're going to go ahead and put this to the bottom. Let's roll some dice and see what we get. We got a burst and two other successes. That's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and roll another burst in there. Oh, that was really good. We got one, two, three, four successes. 
We're going to go ahead and get the focus token from that roll, and we're going to give it to Aluna because that's going to be sweet for her. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our card. We got the potion of agility. Actually, this might not be too bad. It says use before rolling a die, and I could use my agility and gain plus two dice for the test. Sweet. But you know what would be even sweeter is if I gave it to the bard because he's all about agility. Geyser, being the Fortitude Master, is going to go ahead and gain three supply for that roll, and of course we're going to place a search token on that tombstone. The one thing I need to do is go ahead and say where this is going. We're going to put this on the Shambler. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and have Colin. He's such a great bard. He's going to go ahead and exhaust himself to go ahead and gain a Melody token for me. In order for me to give that Melody token to Barrett, I have to re-roll a Wind Die. So I've grabbed the Wind Die that was in the Altar Pool. I'll give it a re-roll. We've now got more water. Gaining that melody token and getting some more water in the pool, apparently we're in a flooded graveyard, we're going to go ahead and continue our actions. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use that melody token to exhaust my character to move the two spaces, and then I'm going to go ahead with my second action. We're going to move three, and then for our third action, we're going to go ahead and use well equipped, and potentially if the character is still alive, the enemy, I might go ahead and use this to put this on him as well. Everything I did is giving me a total of five movements. So we're going to go ahead and move Van Geyser, one, two, three, four, right over to here. Yep, he and the skeleton are going to go toe to toe. Well equipped allows me to attack with both of my swords. The first one we have to attack with is Dawn Edge because it's my main weapon. So we're going to go ahead and roll our might, which is two. Let's see how this goes. We got a success, a success, and a focus. And in order to actually do anything, we have to use this focus token to go ahead and do three damage, which is going to remove that armor token from him. So at least it's a little bit easier to get him. Now we're going to move to our offhand weapon, and I'm also allowed to move three squares at this point, but I'm not going to move. We're just going to stay right where we are. And remember when I said I was going to give this to the bard? And I decided to be greedy. We're going to go ahead and use this, giving myself four dice for this attack instead. So let's go ahead and take these four dice, roll them up, and see how it goes. We got a total of four successes. With the four successes, we're going to be able to do two damage because, of course, he still has that two armor. Now he's almost halfway dead, but because they also get an extra hit point, he has three left. And since, sadly, Geyser wasn't able to destroy this thing, we are going to go ahead and use that water to place this card on him as a bounty. So I'm going to reduce his defense value by two. So hopefully if we get another action sometime, maybe a bard might give it to us? We could actually take him out. But I do have to reroll the altar die. We got another water. Yes! For the final part of my turn, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a card. Stern Clairvoyance. Before we move into my turn, I do want to mention we have these two pieces of equipment that we got from the last chapter. The Ancient Relic, we decided to have Berndt. He's going to uh, control that one, and I'm taking care of the Enchanted Cloak. The nice thing about this is my charisma is 3, so now my health is 13, and poor Van Geysers is only 12. What a wimp. As Barrett is rushing onto that skeleton, the first thing I'm going to do is actually a feat. It's not even an action. I'm going to go ahead and test my charisma. For each success, I can place one melody token on a hero uh, character card or an enemy card. As long as I gain one, I'm hoping to use one for this earth so I can choose a hero to perform an action. And you better believe I'm hoping to give Barrett an action so he can go ahead and kill that uh, shambler. I'm also going to use one of our three supplies here so I can roll four dice. I want lots of melody tokens. So, oh, there's one burst. Let's go ahead and roll that in. Ah, bummer. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, and two focus. I'm going to gain one of those focus for myself, and I'm going to go ahead and give the other one to Aluna. So Aluna has two focus. And Berndt, who's helping me out, mentioned that I actually have two bursts. So let me roll another die in. Okay, that's nice. So let's recount this. I have one, two, three, four, five successes, and still two focus. I gained one of the focus. I gave the other one to Aluna. So Aluna has two focus on her. And with five, I'll go ahead and gain four of the melody tokens, and I'll give one to Berndt. And then I'll use one of those melody tokens to allow Berndt to do an action. Thank you so much, Colin. We're going to go ahead and use Dawn's Edge to use my might. Let's take this guy down. We got two successes, which is enough to do two more damage because I eliminated his defense. And I think that means what we have to do is, sadly, we're going to have to throw some darkness into the pool because I'm going to go ahead and exhaust Dawn's Edge. And I'm also going to use that light that's in the pool to deal one damage to an enemy within range and then change one other altar die tonight. So we're going to go ahead and change that one, reroll this one, and kill off the Shambler. Oh, we got some Earth! That's it, Earth! It's awesome, I like Earth. So that's going to go ahead and give us two supply, bring our total to four, and a dead Shambler. 
How about we have a little fun for our first action? We're going to discard a melody token. We're going to attack with our agility, plus one. This is one of our upgraded cards. So we're actually attacking with uh, three dice. Before this attack, you may discard one melody token, which we have here, to add plus one die. So I'm actually rolling four dice for this attack. I can attack at a range six. Then I'm most definitely going to use the knight here. And we're, we're going to move up to three spaces and then deal one damage to an enemy within range. This wretch over here is one, two, three, four, five. It's within range of six. Gosh, that card is amazing. Let's go ahead and play our battle him and hurt his ears. I'm also going to use this one supply, even though Baron's giving me a hard time about all the supplies that I'm using. So I'm rolling five total dice and one altar die. Let's see what we can do. That's not a great roll. That's not a great roll at all. We have one two three own total successes but i am going to gain three focus i think what i'll do is i'll put two of those focus on aluna and then i'll put uh, give one to myself so i have two but with three hits all i'm going to do is remove the one armor token he has one regular armor so then i'm going to deal one point of damage to him ouch that was that was a terrible shot however i still can move and i'm going to move three spaces and i'm going to make sure i'm still within range of him which is range of six so that will do another automatic point of damage to him so he has two damage out of his seven health i'm going to move myself one two three right over here one two three four five six still within range of the wretch perfect Next, I'm going to go ahead and exhaust my Ancient Cloak and my Bury Loot here using both of the waters here. One will gain me one armor, and the other one is going to gain me two focus. I should have done that before, so I could have used that, but that's okay. I have those, and I will need to reroll these two dice. And we've got Wind and more Light. Well, you guys, what I didn't realize when I moved here is I am not within range three of Aluna. Aluna is right here on the center of the board. So I could have gone here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'd still be within range six to do everything that I was doing. And we haven't had any more information that's happened since I did that. So we're going to give it to us and say I moved here because my next action, I'm going to go ahead and interact with Aluna. What I get to do is I'll roll four dice. For any of the bursts that I roll, we can discard one focus, and then we'll discard one of the undead that's on the board. Then if there are no undead on the board, we can actually discard the top card of Winora's deck. Really want to be able to do that. So let me give these a roll. I got two bursts, you guys. <laughs> okay, I also, with those bursts, get to use the roll and keep rolling. Um, okay, so what we have is two bursts. Let's discard both of these. That's perfect. There are two undead on the board so we're going to remove both of those and then that allows us to discard this top villain card dinner preparations <laughs> that ain't happening okay now with this roll we don't have to worry about any of these i do still have focus here i'm gaining one two three focus i have four i'm actually going to put all three focus back onto aluna so aluna is going to have a total of five focus i'll grab one more for my final action i think i'm just going to draw a card I'd like to have more cards in my hand so we can potentially discard them to get rid of undead. So I'm going to draw Inspiring Chorus, and then at the end of my turn, I get to draw a card and I get Braving the Dark. Awesome, that's a search card. We love those search cards. Next, we're going to move to the threat turn. In any order that players choose, each hero resolves the activate text on the card in their threat area from left to right. If a hero did not activate a threat card, which will be Baron because he took out his Shambler, he's going to draw a threat card. So he's going to draw this one. What he's going to get is a green Revenant minion. So this one is going to be placed in a spawn location as close as possible to where Baron is. And then this wretch, the red one, is going to activate. The Revenant is going to spawn right here, right by Barrett, and this wretch, one, two, three, four, five, is going to get to here. Within range, he can attack me. The wretch is attacking me, and I have to use my agility for defense. My agility is two. I do have one armor token, and I have one regular armor, so let's see. I've got two successes, plus the one armor, which I'll discard, and the one regular armor. I take no damage. That will end his activation. Next is the villain turn, and here's the thing. Each minion heals one damage. If there's no minion in play, each character must resist three with charisma. I'd go, hey, bring it. But we know how charismatic Van Geyser is. Not so much. <laughs> so fortunately, that wretch is out. He'll heal by one. We don't have to worry about the resist. There's still no shadow in the altar pools. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and draw the next card. And we have Royal Tasters. That sounds great. Each character adjacent to an enemy, that would be me, suffers one damage. So I'm going to have to take a damage for that. 
Uh, I'm down to tw uh, 12 health. I'm just like Van now. Each enemy adjacent to a character heals one damage. Blast you, wretch. So I did that two damage to the wretch, and the wretch is now fully healed. That's kind of cool. If no character suffers damage this way, each character must resist with Fortitude 4. Don't have to worry about that. We'll discard this card. Oh, and by the way, she's probably the scariest looking villain I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, yeah, so fun. Finally, we'll move to the encounter phase. We first have each hero must place one quest token on an empty grave space farthest from them. We'll do that in a second. Then we have each hero must either discard one search token from this card or place one search token in the grave space nearest them that does not have a search token. So I'll have to place one. Uh, Berent will not because Berent got that one. I'll give it to him. And then finally here, each undead moves two spaces. There's no undead on the board. Oh, wait. Actually, there will be, because this activates first, I believe. So these ones will come out on the board, and then they're going to move two spaces towards the closest gate. And then if they're adjacent to one of us, they'll deal three damage. And then finally, we will draw our card here, and we have Sanctify the Earth. Each hero must either discard one focus from a Luna or place one search token on a gray space nearest them with no search token. So let's go ahead and discard two focus tokens for this so we don't have to place any additional search tokens. Then we have, if we have Earth in the altar pool, which actually we do, uh, each hero may discard one focus from a Luna to discard one quest token from the board. Uh, yeah, that's going to get rid of both of the undead. So we'll discard two more focus from Aluna. That means Aluna only has one focus card left, but that means no quest tokens at all. We don't, because this would place two out and then this will remove the two, <laughs> but we'll have to reroll this die. And of course, we're still going to put out this search token. We'll give that altar die a roll and we have more earth. So this ended up being pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, can't really complain. I'm going to have to place this search token here. Now, because this search token is here right now, Aluna's text is blank, so we can't use her ability where it would actually allow us to discard villain cards right now on the board you can see there are no quest tokens here so what that means is if we can interact with aluna once i get rid of this we can actually just discard villain cards the encounters are all about trying to get to your villain as fast as possible and take them out so that's totally what i'm going to try and do <laughs> okay we'll refresh everything and let's start the next round I'm going to start for this round. First thing I'm going to do is do the interact with this graveyard. That allows me to take this search token and I will actually put it onto the graveyard uh, the graveyard card. That way we now can activate Aluna. But that took one action for me to do that. Last round we didn't use Hue at all. This time I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust him. This ally may move up to four spaces and then we can either have him attack or change to alter dice. I'm going to go ahead and have him attack. I don't even think I'm going to have him move. I'm also though going to use this water here and that's going to allow us to change up to two alter dice to other choices that we would like which is awesome i'm also going to use this wind here just to allow me to gain another melody token so i'll put that on um, for me we'll roll two dice for this attack i'm just looking to do some damage to this wretch uh we only did one success that is a bummer because unfortunately hugh is what we call an ally allies cannot use or gain focus i could have used a supply but i was hoping that we'd at least get two successes so with that hit he just hit the armor of the wretch doesn't do anything so then with hugh's ability we're going to change one die we're going to change this earth actually to a shadow i can't believe we're doing that but baron says he has a plan and you know you got to believe him when he says that well since hugh's attack whiffed i'm going to go ahead and use this wind here to deal one damage to an enemy within range but i'll have to exhaust this card and i will roll this up we've got some more earth and that means the wretch has one point of damage that's what i wanted that means if he's out during um wayne menorah's turn he'll just heal and that's great I'm also going to use one melody token here as if it was water to gain one armor token. I like those armor tokens. So I'll be back to having one armor token. Then what I'm going to do, this is going to be kind of weird. I'm going to use a Luna. There's no undead on the board, but I'm going to use her for my final two actions just to do the interact so I can discard two villain cards. I'm actually hoping not for a burst because I don't want to discard that. I rolled a success. Great. That's all right. I can then discard one of her cards because, oh, and look at that scary guy. This is why I want to get rid of these cards <laughs> um, because uh, there are no undead on the board. We'll do the second one. Beautiful. Still no burst. We'll discard this one. Another scary boy, baby. <laughs> Good. Okay. Then I will end my turn by drawing one card and I draw the battle hymn. 
We're going to move over to Van Geyser's turn, and we're going to start with Discerning the Prey. And if you didn't notice, that was the first time that Colin has gone first since we started this campaign. Really, I thought I'd give him a shot. And he did okay, I guess. We're going to go ahead and read this out, though. It says, I have to test my intellect. And for each success, you may reveal the top card of your deck. For each bounty card revealed, you may attach it to an enemy within range. And I have to shuffle each other revealed card back in your deck. And I could use wind to move two spaces. One, we don't have wind in the pool. And two, I don't want to move two spaces. We're not going to use any supply. We're just going to go ahead and roll these up. Oh, we got two successes. That's great. So I get to reveal the top two cards. And if I get any bounties, I can go ahead and put them on our enemy. So the first one we have is attach this card to an enemy in your room. After the attached enemy is defeated, I get to gain additional supply. You bet that's going to go on there. And I think I can do both of these, can I? Yeah. For each revealed bounty, you may attach it to an enemy. Oh, and look at this. I got another one. Attach this to an enemy within range. Reduce the attached enemy's defense value by one. So we can attach both of these if we want to, and I think that's a good plan. After looking at our minion, he actually doesn't have any armor. He has one armor token, so this one would be pointless to do, and it's a great card to actually attack with. So I'm actually going to shuffle this one back into my deck instead of attaching it to him. After seeing how good our Minstrel and Hugh did, which, if you didn't notice, they didn't do very much damage, I'm going to show them how to do it. We're going to try to take this guy down in one turn. For my first action, we're going to go ahead and attack with Dustfall using two agility dice. Let's roll them up. We got a hit and a focus. That's not how you show people how to fight. But we are going to be at least be able to get rid of the armor token, and I actually am going to gain the focus token because I only have one right now, so I want to get it up to two. At this point, I'm actually going to exhaust Dustfall, and Dustfall is going to do one damage automatically by going ahead and exhausting our shadow die. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn any other die to a light. So we're going to turn this one to light. We're going to roll up this shadow die into something else. We got wind. That's pretty good. Silly Van guys are using Dust Edge against the undead. He probably wants to use Dawn's Edge because, you know, they're not too fond of light. We are going to use a supply for this one because, well, I guess I'm not too confident myself very much anymore. We're going to roll up these Might Dice. We got two and a Focus token. And we are going to use that focus to go ahead and get three successes, which means he has taken three more damage. He has taken four damage, and he has a total of eight health, so he's down to half health. This is coming down to the wire, fighting her. Let's see if we can take her out. I need to roll three dice because I'm going to use a supply. Oh, we got to get this girl. Let's take it down. One, two, three. Oh, no, that's not enough. We, she is left with one health, but that's okay. We can exhaust Dawn's Edge, but it's a kind of a double-edged sword. Get it? Dawn's Edge is a sword. We're going to go ahead and exhaust it to go ahead and deal one damage to an enemy within range and change any other dice to a knight. And we're going to turn our light die into shadow. Oh, man, we took it out, but it was a big, big fight, but you have to do it. Now, of course, for defeating this creature, we are going to gain two supply because this character had that bounty on him. So we're going to go ahead and gain these. We're up to three supply. And I do have to go ahead and reroll the light die. Let's see what we get. We got fire. All right, lots of fire. So apparently it went from a flooded field to a burning field. The last thing Van Guys is going to do is draw a card. Oh, we got a well-equipped card. This one's lots of fun. Well, since Van Geyser can't seem to get Shadow out of the altar pool, I'm going to have to do something for it. Moving into that threat phase, the wretch is going to go. He's going to attack me with this Inflict. Uh, and then, unfortunately, he has this Shadow here effect that he would normally do. However, I have my Verse of Diversion. Play before an enemy activates to place one Melody Token on that enemy's card. Then choose a hero to gain one Melody Token. I'm going to go ahead and gain the Melody Token. And then what I can do with that melody token I put on the wretch, I can discard that melody token immediately so this effect does not happen. Woot. Then I'm going to use this uh, fire here to have each hero may either gain one melody token or discard a melody token to gain two focus. So I'm going to keep my three melody tokens. Barrett, though, is going to discard his one because apparently he doesn't think it's worth it. And he's going to gain two more focus so he has a total of three. I do have to give Barrett props because he was able to take out that Revenant. So because of that, he's also going to have to draw one of these cards. And he gets another one. <laughs> and this one's yellow. It's going to show up in the same spot. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be busy for the next turn. I'll roll two dice for this attack that's going on me. Uh, and I get, uh, and I had to reroll the altar die that I used for this. So I'm getting two successes and I have an armor token here for three and I have my regular armor, which is four. So I blocked all of it. I'll gain that focus. And I think I'm going to put that focus onto a Luna. So that sounds good to me. So a Luna has two focus on her now, and that will end the activations for the threats. Now we'll move to Winora's turn. She's going to do her activate effect here and heal up that wretch. That wretch has now healed up to full. But we do still have that shadow here that says each hero must either discard one focus or suffer one damage. We're each going to discard a focus. That'll put Barrett down to two and I'll go down to three. 
Then let's go ahead and draw our villain card, and we have Call for the Caregivers. Each hero must test their intellect three. Each hero who fails must draw one Lurker card. Oh no! I'm gonna go first for this. I'm gonna use a supply so that I'm rolling three dice for this, and I'm re-rolling that Shadow Alter die. And I have, wow, one, two. Okay, I've got a total of three successes there, and I still have two focus that I can gain. I'm going to gain one of the focus and put the other focus onto Aluna. So Aluna now has three focus. And unfortunately, I rolled shadow. Okay, Baron, let's see you. What, are you going to also use a supply? Yeah, that sounds like a good plan because uh, I don't think the, getting those Zerker cards going to be bad news. Come on, Van Geyser. One, two, three. Yes, three and a focus token. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that focus token, giving me three total focus. Moving to the encounter phase. First, we'd each have to place one quest token on an empty grave space farthest from us. Then with this one, we're going to have to discard this one search token that should have been on there. Sorry, I had pulled that off already. And the other one, we're going to have to actually place onto the board. I'll place it next to me. And then those two quest tokens are going to move two spaces towards the gates. Next, then we will draw our encounter card and we have the Blasphemers. Uh, each hero must either discard one focus from a Luna or activate the enemy farthest from them, drawing a threat card if unable to activate. Eh, we'll get rid of two focus. I think that's okay, right? Yeah, we're going to get rid of two focus. So there's only one focus on a Luna. We'll place our two undead over here. Each of them will move two spaces towards the closest gate. As you can see here, if we don't take care of them this turn, they're both going to get there and escape. Also, with this search token, we can place it actually right next to Berent, uh, which is great because hopefully he can take care of that for me and spawn that Revenant over here that he's going to also deal with. Thanks, Berent, for doing everything. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the next round. Colin has given me a tall order. Good thing I'm a tall guy. We're going to go ahead first and take care of that search token by interacting with this search token. So bye-bye search token, mission one accomplished. With that search token gone, now we can go ahead and take care of Aluna. Oh, she's been so good to us this far. Hopefully she continues. For our second action, we're going to continue with our tall order by trying to take out the enemy in front of us. We're going to start by playing well-equipped, which allows me to attack with my main weapon and my offhand weapon, so I get two attacks. So our first one, we're going to use our might, and we're going to go ahead and roll. I got two hits and a focus token, and we're going to go ahead and use that focus token to not only get rid of this defense, but then the other two successes are going to be damage that we're going to be putting on the enemy, and she's down to six health right now. So we're going to continue attacking. We're going to use our offhand weapon, which is Dustfall. Probably not going to do as well because, of course, this is more of a knight type weapon. Oh, look at that, though. We got two successes, so that's going to be two more damage because she doesn't have any armor because the only armor she had was from the armor token for damage. Now, that was just the well-equipped card. Of course, if I wanted to use the water, I could attach this card to an enemy in range and reduce the attached enemy's defense by one. First off, it doesn't help. She has no armor. And second, we don't have water in the pool right now. So we've gone ahead and used our well-equipped. That was our second action. For the third action, again, we're going to go ahead and attack, and Dawn's Edge is my man. We're going to go ahead and use this one, see how it goes. I got one, two successes. Yes, that's exactly what we needed. We're up to two, four, six successes against this person, or I should say damage, sorry, meaning she only has two left. You're right. It's time for the big old one, two knockout punch. We're going to go ahead and exhaust Dustfall, giving ourselves one damage to the enemy. I'm going to have to go ahead and turn another die to something of my choice. Oh, no, sorry. I have have to turn it to light. Then I'm going to go ahead and exhaust Dawn's Edge to turn the light die or to use the light die and then I have to exhaust a, or turn a different die to night. Oh, I hope you cleft up with me on that one. But we got everything taken care of. This character is dead. Oh, totally took out the enemy in front of me. But I do have to go ahead, roll a couple altar dice and we gain a supply for taking out the enemy. We're going to go ahead, roll the altar dice that we used. Oh, we got two wind and check it out. My tall order was complete. So Baird did great, except for he did miss one thing, and that was putting any more focus on Aluna. So unfortunately, fo uh, Aluna only has one focus. That's going to be a tall order trying to do that one. So let's first start with Hugh. He was going to go ahead and exhaust, and we're going to have him attack with his uh, intelligence. He's going for that wretch. That wretch still has one armor. I just need two successes. Oh, two successes. Can't do anything with the focus, but that gives us one point of damage on that wretch. Perfect. I just want him to be damaged so that uh, Winora will have to heal him. The first action that I'm going to do then is braving the dark. I'm going to try and do a search. There's one search token on the graves already, so I need two or more successes to get a search card for this. 
and then I can place another search token. I only roll two with this, but I get to gain plus one die for this test if I have one melody token on my card. I do. And then I'm going to use this fire here to gain another supply. So I'm actually going to gain another supply and I'm going to use a supply for this. So I'm going to roll four dice for this. I'm also going to gain the supply so I don't forget from that one. Uh, and I'm going to reroll this die. Let's see what we can get here. Well, that was an okay roll. Actually, this will work out really well, you guys. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have both of those as successes. That means the first one's canceled out by the search token. The second one is going to give me a search card. So I'm going to gain the potion of fortitude, and this can help with my fortitude. Great. So I'm going to keep that one. Definitely not going to give it to Barents because he didn't give me the agility one. Uh, then I'm going to gain one, two, three focus. I'm going to put all three focus onto Aluna. That means Aluna has a total of four beautiful focus. And we've got some water in the alt altar pool. I'm also going to place this search token onto the graves, and now this time we'll each be able to discard a search token from the graves, and so that means Aluna will be active for the whole next turn. Beautiful. Then I'm going to go ahead and exhaust my enchanted cloak. I'm going to gain, whoops, that's the wrong one. I'm going to gain an armor token for that one, and then I'm going to exhaust the songs of home, and I can place a melody token on either a hero card or an enemy card. I'm going to put it onto Van Geyser, helping him out a little bit even though we've been giving each other such a hard time. And then I'm going to re-roll both of these. And we've got, oh no, we've got more shadow. That's not what I like. And wind. Next, I'm just going to exhaust my Willow's Slingshot here, dealing one damage to that wretch. So that means the wretch now has two points of damage. Come on, we are trying to roll some earth if we can. No, there's more shadow, because why not? Let's just be filled with shadow. So that wretch has been bothering me, so what I'm going to do is spend my second action here, and I'm going to attack with my agility. My agility is only two. Before the attack, you may discard one melody token. Heck yeah, I've got four, so I'll discard one, and that's going to give me plus one dice. So I'm going to roll three for this. And then here, I'm also going to use a shadow, and I can either move up to three spaces or deal one damage to an enemy within range. And you know I'm probably going to be dealing the damage to the wretch. Let's see what we get. I'll roll these up. So I have two successes and a focus. I'm definitely going to put the focus onto a Luna. So that's going to give us a total of five uh, focus on there. With the two damage there, one's going to be negated from the armor. The other one's going to go onto the wretch. That's three out of his seven damage. Man, he's still not gone. Now, the nice thing is, is I can go ahead now and exhaust my bury loot. Choose a hero within range to gain two focus. I'll go ahead and gain two focus, and I can do that because I have that water die right there. That maxes me out at five focus. Ooh, when I gain that, I'm going to put one of them over to Aluna. So Aluna's going to have yet another focus. I'm going to have four. Okay, that's going to exhaust this card. I'm going to pick all of these up, and that means I have to use reuse this one. I'll roll it. We've got some light. We're going to gain or deal another point of damage to that wretch. So that wretch has four points of damage. I don't need to do the moving. He has three health, or actually, yeah, three health left. For my final action, look at all of that focus. See, Bear, this is how you do it. Six focus here. I'm going to roll six dice looking for bursts if I can. Let's see. I see one burst. And so since I have that burst, I can roll another die in. Come on, be another burst. Be another burst. Oh, it's not. So with that one burst, I am able to discard one focus, and then we'll discard one of those quest tokens. But unfortunately, we can't discard one of the villain cards like we were hoping because there's still one undead out. I will, however, gain some focus. I'll gain one, two, three focus. I'm at four. I'm going to put all of three of those focus on to Aluna. So Aluna has tons of focus. We'll go ahead and remove this undead from that praying, and then we'll each draw a card, and I get the inspiring chorus. Oh, I got persistent tracker. That's awesome. I can do some searches. Moving to that threat phase, this wretch is going to go ahead and engage and attack me yet again. Also, he's going to use the shadow here, each character in this enemy's room. And when it's an encounter, it's all of us are in the same room. So we're both going to gain one threat token, which is terrible. And then, oh no, we have growing dread for Berndt. Put this into his threat area. It will do this activate effect and potentially the, this effect if he does not deal with it. Remember that Threat Tokens increases Inflict Tests by one. However, that will happen after he does this initial attack. So he's still only attacking me for four. I'll roll my Agility of two, and I'll reroll that die. Oh, that's a burst. I will take that. Okay, I've got three successes plus one regular armor. That's four to block it. That means I get to keep this armor from last round, finally. 
And now we'll each gain those threat tokens and we have some light in the altar pool. When Nora will be next to go, she is going to heal up the wretch by one, that blasted wretch. And then each hero must either discard one focus or suffer one damage. We'll each discard one focus. That puts Baron down to two and I'm down to three. And we'll have to reroll this die. We'll then go ahead and draw her next card. Oh, we've seen this one. Each character adjacent to an enemy suffers one damage, so that's going to be it to me. That'll be my second point of damage. And then each enemy that's adjacent to an enemy or a hero will heal one damage. And if none of that had happened, we'd have to do the resist. We don't have to worry about the resist. Let's reroll that altar die and we get water. Finally, we have our encounter turn. We're gonna have to place out two more undead. We're then going to discard both search tokens and with this activate, we're going to have one of the undead escape and the other two that we put out are going to move two spaces. Then we're going to draw this card and we have sanctify the earth. Oh my goodness. Okay. Each hero must either discard one focus from a Luna or place one search token. We're definitely going to discard one focus each. Now here's a question. We need to have earth, but I'm realizing I have melody tokens. Can I use my melody token as if it was an earth? We're going to say that we can because I can use them for my cards and this is an effect that helps us. So I'll discard a melody token to give us that earth symbol. Each hero may discard one focus from a Luna to discard one quest token from the board. That means we will get rid of both of these focus. There's four focus left on a Luna and that means there'll be no undead on the board, but we will have one undead escape on this card. And remember if there's five on here, we lose the game. This undead will shamble over to the gate and escape and two more would have shown up, but we just eliminated them. So now we can move to the next turn. We'll refresh everything and Berndt, let's see your stuff. I have been given no tall orders this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my melody token to exhaust ban geyser. That allows them to move two spaces back towards Aluna so that we can actually start activating her as well. I at least help out the bard that way because I don't have any threats on the board that I'm really too worried about. Before I do any actions, I'm actually gonna to try to get rid of my threat token. Now to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and test my willpower. And the test is actually equal, I'm gonna roll the test and I'm gonna take away successes equal to the number of enemies on the board. Now that's one. Now any leftover successes are really considered a success and I can take those threat tokens off. So let's roll two and see what happens. We got two and a focus token and I'm gonna go ahead and keep that focus token this time because we got plenty on Luna and there's no undead out there. That does bring my focus total up to three and I do get to get rid of that threat token now, fantastic. Removing my threat token wasn't even an action. We're now gonna do our first action. I'm gonna use a supply to use persistent tracker. We're gonna roll four dice for this search and we're gonna see how this goes. Come on, we want lots of successes. I got one, two, three, four. And instead of gaining the tokens, I'm gonna go ahead and use them to get even more successes. Oh, we're gonna get a card. We're gonna get a bunch of resources. It'll be awesome. The card I got is going to be the Potion of Willpower. Oh, that's gonna be fantastic if I get any more of those threat tokens. Before rolling dice, I get to add some stuff for my willpower test. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and figure out how many successes we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna go ahead and gain five supply, which is gonna give us a total of six. Oh, we're rocking in supply now. Our horse with the most is gonna go ahead and use his next two actions to go ahead and fire off a Luna here. We're gonna use our first one, rolling our four dice equal to the amount of focus tokens she has. So now we don't actually want bursts and we didn't get any bursts. And the reason we don't is because those are gonna make us remove these tokens. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and gain a focus token and I'm gonna put it in my pool because I only have one, now I've got two. And since we were able to do this, we get to discard a card, get rid of evil baby again. And we're gonna go into our second action. I'm gonna roll up four more dice and not get any bursts. No burst, that's awesome. And I get to gain two focus tokens this time. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and keep those focus tokens and we're gonna get rid of a card. Ah, not a creepy baby. I did complete all three actions. I might've said two at the wrong time, but here we go. We get a card, it's marked prey. Oh, hopefully we get the bad guy to come out and mark her. Well, I think it makes sense to have us discard the last villain card. So the first thing I'm gonna do on my turn is roll four dice here. I, I got a burst, you guys, that's a bummer. I'll have to roll for it. Okay, with that burst, I have to discard one focus from here, uh, but that means I will get to discard the last villain card. Which one is it? Another creepy baby. Oh, these creepy babies. Okay, uh, that means though that when Nora will spawn at the end of this turn, and then all we have to do is kill her. Now. For focus, I gained one, two, three focus. I'm gonna go ahead and put two in my pool and I'll put one more on a Luna just in case. 
I am all the way up at five total focus and we have four on her. So that was my first action. At this point, we just want Winora to show up. So what I'm going to do is my last two actions, I'm just gonna draw cards. So I've got the verse of diversion. Then I'm going to, for my final action, the rousing finale. That'd be great, especially if I can take her out with that. And then for the end of my turn, I'm gonna draw a card. Come on, more attack. Nope, that's a search card. Eh, oh well. We'll move to the threat phase. And just so you can see the altar pool, because I haven't shown you this in a bit, None of them are shadow this time. Thank you, Baron, for not uh, putting shadow in our pool. And then uh, we can see here this guy's going to inflict four just like normal. And then for Baron, he's going to either have to discard one focus or gain one threat token. Then he's going to have to test his willpower. I'm assuming he's going to discard a focus. So let's just do that now. So he's down to three focus, and then he's going to have to test his willpower. I'm rolling two dice for this agility test. And I, wow, that's actually not a great roll. Uh, I have one armor token. I have one success. I'm going to use a focus here. So that's one, two, plus the armor and plus my regular armor. That gives a total of four, so no damage. And I'll gain that focus right back with this focus symbol. So that's me. Van Geyser doesn't have any threat tokens, so he's just going to roll and hope for some focus. Oh, I got a focus because really the test is zero. So we pass the test and I gain a focus. And since we did pass the test, we're going to discard this card. Now we'll move to the villain turn, and the first thing she's going to do is just heal up that wretch by one, so that wretch has a total of one damage on him. That's fine by me. There's no shadow in the pool, so then we're just going to flip her over, and she's going to activate. She has 16 plus 2, a total of 18 health, 3 armor, plus she's going to get 2 of the armor here because of the 2 enemy upgrades. Whew, she's going to be fun. Uh, and she's going to immediately activate each character in this enemy's room, which is both of us, must either discard one card or resist Charisma 4. Then it's going to engage and inflict a Charisma 6 attack. And if it did have any shadow in the pool, it'd actually heal by 2 damage. I'm going to go ahead and do the Charisma Resist test here. So I roll 3 dice for this. I get, wow, that's a burst at least, and 2 focus. Okay, that's a little bit better. I have two successes here. I will use two focus, one here and one here for a four. So I take no damage and I'll gain one of these focus back. And then Barrett's going to do his. Instead of taking the charisma test because my charisma is a one, I'm going to go ahead and discard this card. And that's going to nullify the first attack. Winora is going to spawn as close as possible to one of our characters. So she's going to spawn here. She can move up to four spaces and has a range of five. One, two, three, four. Uh, let's say one, two, three, four. She's going to move here and she's going to go ahead and attack Barrett. As I've said before, Van Geyser's charisma is fantastic. So he's going to go ahead and use one of these supply to give myself two dice to try to block the screaming baby. Let's see how we do here. I got one and a burst, which is fantastic. We need more of those. Oh, well, I think we're going to have to go ahead and use our focus token to give us three blocks. I'm still going to take three damage, but I do have one armor. So it actually is only going to be two. Finally, we'll move to the encounter turn. Each hero must place one quest token on an empty space. We're going to do that. Then we have discarding this search token, and we're going to have to place one of these search tokens out, which means that Aluna is totally negated. We can't get rid of undead. And then the undead are going to move two spaces. Then we're going to flip our next one, and we have Unbridled Necromancy. Each hero places one quest token in the empty grave space furthest from them. So we're going to have more undead. Great. There's no shadow, so we don't have to worry about that. First, we'll place our search token right here. Next, we'll put two uh, quest tokens in two grave spots, and they're each going to move two spaces towards the, uh, the gate. And then, unfortunately, we're spawning two more... Oh boy, they're all going to try and run to this uh, gate. And if all four of these escape, we lose the game. I'm going to take the helm this time. And the first thing I'm going to do is move. And I'm going to take two actions to do this. One, two, three, four. I'm going to move here. That sounds kind of terrible, right? Spending two actions to do that. But that's because I'm giving this potion of fortitude over to Bert. That's a free action to do that. My third action then will be to do a search on this graveyard. What I'm going to do then is exhaust my song from home and my enchanted cloak here, and that's going to gain me one armor token, and it's going to gain one melody token, but I'm going to give that to Bert. He needs that. So I'm going to go ahead and use these two altar dice, give them a roll. I've got an earth and a water. That's awesome. The other thing that I did, I forgot about this threat token, you guys, last round. So I'll take one point of damage because the inflict test from the wretch should have been plus one. 
Then I'm going to quickly try and take care of that. I have to do an intellect test equal to the amount of minions on the board. There's still only one minion on the board. My intellect is two, so I'm just going to roll two dice here. I've got two successes. With one, it's canceled out because of the wretch. The other one, I can get rid of the threat token. Great. And remember, that's not an action, so I can do that no problem. Let's keep going with our exhaust effects. I'm then going to exhaust my slingshot here and deal one damage to Winora, so she now has 17 health. Awesome. I'm also going to use my loot here, and I'm next to Baird, so I'm going to go ahead and give Baird to focus. That's going to give him a total of five. Yeah, I want him to be the hammer that takes down Winora. So give him both of those. Let's roll these two dice up. Okay, beautiful. I have light and water. The biggest thing is no shadow. That's what I wanted to see. Now I'm going to finally do that third action. So I'm going to do a search with fortitude. That's normally two. I'm going to gain plus one die because I have two melody tokens. So I'm rolling three dice. I'm going to spend one supply. So I'm rolling four dice. So I'm going to roll four dice for this. Then I'm going to spend one melody token to uh, gain either one supply or one melody token. I'm going to gain another supply. This is just going to help us with all of our supplies. Uh, hopefully for end games, we can gain cooler equipment. So I'm going to roll four dice here. I have one, two, three successes. I'll use a focus for one more. That's four successes. One's going to be canceled out from a search card. And this is the potion of healing. Great. And then I'll gain three more supply. That's going to put us at nine total supply. Oh, that's awesome. This also means we can place a search token on the graves. The last thing I'll do is go ahead and draw a card and I get Braving the Dark again. Van Geyser again has a tall order ahead of him and he's going to start his turn off by playing Shared Bounty. I'm going to be able to play this on a hero within range. I'm going to play it on myself. And then I can go ahead and exhaust light to attach a discounted bounty card to an enemy within range. So the discarded bounty card I'm going to use is well equipped. It's the super one. And this one's going to allow me to reduce the enemy's defense value by two within range. And she's totally within range. So we're going to put this on her. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and roll this. But be in mind, I'm also going to do the use effect as soon as I'm done rolling this dice to allow myself to move three spaces and deal two automatic damage to an adjacent enemy attached with a bounty card. Giving her three damage, meaning she only has 15 left. We have to re-roll that altar die and we got wind. Wind is fantastic. My shared bounty being an ongoing is still out there. And like I said, now I'm going to go ahead and do the usability, which is going to allow me to move three, but I'm only going to move two. And then we're going to deal those two damage, which we've already done. Now in true Colin and Barrett style, we're going after the boss. We're totally going to ignore this undead that are down here in the bottom of the screen. And hopefully we can take her out before they win the game. Van Geyser is all about his fortitude, and he gets to go ahead and use Marked Prey. That's a fortitude attack, so he's going to be able to use three dice for that. Then he's also going to gain two more for the potion, and if you can see right here, yep, using a supply. So we get six dice. Let's fortitude her really good. We did get one burst, so I'm going to go ahead and roll that up. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm just going to dump focus onto her pretty much. I'm going to go ahead and play the two focus that we have here. So we got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's going to be the amount of successes we get. And so I'm going to go ahead and remove two of the armor tokens. And I've also put that bounty on. So she only has one defense left. So with nine total successes, we are going to subtract three, giving ourselves six damage that we're going to be putting on her. And so we've already gotten her down to half health. For Van Geyser's third action, we're going to try to repeat the same thing we did. But I don't, And the only way that's going to happen is a lot of bursts. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead first before we do. I am going to spend that wind die to give myself the ability to put marked prey onto our enemy. And we're going to then be able to give an extra die for us when we use Dawn's Edge. I mean, why not? We're using a Sword of Light to attack a vamp pyrrhic type creature. So we're going to get two dice for the actual skill of might that he has, one for the actual prey, marked prey card, and I'm going to use a supply to give myself another one. So we're going to roll up four dice. Come on, bursts. We got a total of two bursts. We're going to roll those over here and we got one. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? Three, six, seven. I'm going to go ahead and spend a focus token. I don't see why not. That's seven more damage and she only has one defense. Oh man, 
This is an amazing combo. I love this. And that's going to bring her down to three health left. Wow, we are absolutely rocking it. Okay, the things I have to do is first I have to roll this die. I could have rolled it with all the other dice. It would have been a better plan. I got Earth. We're going to put Earth back into the pool. Then the next thing I'm going to do with all these dice in here is mass chaos, but that's okay. That's what this game is all about. Oh, chaos when you're fighting the bad guy. I'm going to exhaust both of these, which means we're going to start exhausting dice. We're going to turn that die or exhaust the light to turn it to darkness. Then we're going to use our darkness, exhaust that, to turn this one to light. That's going to give us two more damage on her automatically. It goes straight through the armor. Guess what? One health. We're one health away from getting here. Hopefully we can take her out. Now we do have to roll a couple of these dice as well. Clearing all the chaos, we're just going to go ahead and roll up those two dice. Oh no, we got darkness. Well, hopefully that's not going to affect us too bad. Well, the nice thing is exhaust effects you can do even when it's not your turn. And Hugh is here. He sees that Winora is almost down for the count. So what he's going to do is exhaust and he's going to attack with his intellect. He can't use focus, but he can use supply. So we're going to use supply for this attack. We're going to roll three dice. We only need two successes to take her out. We'll move Hugh. One, two spaces. He's now within one two, three, four, within range four. That was a tip. One, two, three. He's within range three. He'll go ahead and attack Winora. Rolling three dice for this attack, and we have a burst. Let's go ahead and burst that. And we have one, two, three successes. The focus don't do anything. Three is more than enough. Winora is toast. There's nothing that feels better than seeing the sunrise after a grueling night of destroying the undying and littering a cemetery with corpses returned to the grave. Once that vampiric witch screeched out her last curse and you saw her fall to ashes, you were able to get a surprisingly restful sleep. Good morning, friends, Hugh says with a chipper uptick to his voice. What a crazy night, eh? I thought I was a goner when those profanes came after us. What would I have ever done without you? He holds out a cracked wheat sweet roll, oddly warm by the steam rolling off of it. Let's get up and find that in. Each hero adds one random hero upgrade card belonging to their hero to their journal, and then we're going to add well rested to the journal. We also need to note which hero suffered the most damage. Then each hero heals all of their damage, and for every set of three supply, we can gain equipment. Here's the thing. I have three points of damage. Baird's over there only has two. So we're going to have to notate that I took more damage than Van Geyser. That doesn't seem possible, but it's true. We ended the game with six supply, so we'll remove all six supply, and that means we can draw two equipment cards. We have runed throwing knives. Well, that looks kind of cool. And then our other one will be the Oblivion Chain. Oh, that also looks cool. That's an equipment as well. We'll be able to put both of these into the journal since we each get to choose one. Next, we're going to grab this Well Rested card. That means in our next quest, we'll start off with a focus. And then we each randomly gained an upgrade card. Baird has the Road Warden, and I will have Braving the Dark. And then we'll end chapter two of Alter Quest. Now Baird and I have to decide if we want to keep going on this or maybe play some other games. We'll see. But overall, we're having lots of fun. The encounter was definitely a different experience than the board uh, doing the actual dungeon. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you later.